All right, what's going on? My name is Kyle Welcher. I appreciate y'all checking back uh, on the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I appreciate you stopping by. A lot of y'all who are not new to the channel, though, y'all are going to know and be familiar with kind of the style and the patterns and kind of just the overall concept through which I fish these tournaments and which I'm fun fished and stuff like that also. So today we're just going to kind of go through the differences in running and gunning, which is self-admittedly what I do a lot of times what I do way too much so a lot of times I feel like I run and gun a ton I'm trying to find those fish that are set up that are feeding I can catch them as fast as possible and I can catch as many of them as possible now there's obviously times where you should stay put whenever you find an above average area or you find an area that has a population of fish especially one that has the potential of winning one of these big tournaments like I fished the Bassmaster Elite Series and it's more times than not the, the tournament is one out of one or two areas, and there's almost always a day where the guy has to go scrambling, but for the most part, the tournaments are won off of one area, one spot, one little creek, I mean, one tree, one dock, whatever it is, there's almost always something like that that you hear about where the dude stayed put and he really caught him and really made it happen. Now, for me, the reason I run and gun so fast, I feel like I lose confidence faster than any other fisherman. That's not confidence in myself or my abilities. That's only confidence in exactly what I'm fishing and the bait that I'm fishing. If I fish for 15 or 20 minutes and I haven't had a bite, I haven't cold, I haven't, you know, changed spots or something like that, guess what? I'm about to make a change. I'm not the type of guy that pulls up on, you know, a random bank or something and fishes down through it and didn't get a bite and going to turn around and go back down through it with a different bait. I'm not going to do that. I leave... 4, 8, 12, sometimes 20 rods laying on the front deck, and I have a certain scenario or a specific application for every single rod. So whenever I get to a lay down piece of pole timber or something like that, I'm going to flip a jig to it. When I get to something that's a lot more matted or thicker, I'm going to flip a D-bomb in it. Whenever I get to, you know, some shallow pea gravelly or shallow bluff, I'm going to throw a square bill by it. I'm going to throw, you know, a, a Little John MD to something like that that's an 8 foot. That's just kind of what I do. I have a system for the baits that I throw. So I run a gun and I cover a ton of water, and I cover that water with the bait that, for me, makes the most sense in that application. Now what that does, that's going to do a couple of things. Number one, it's going to make you a, a more efficient angler. It's going to make you a more consistent angler. But sometimes you'll fish over the fish. That's just the truth of it. Like I know that sometimes I fish over fish. But I feel like throughout the course of a day, I'm going to put my bait in front of five aggressive fish. And I'm going to be able to catch them. And a lot of times, the style that I like to fish does generate some big bites. Now when would I say that's the wrong approach? A couple of times. Number one, lakes that have history, like Gunnersville. You know, there's a lot of lakes in the country, St. John's River, all this, Okeechobee. There are certain places on Okeechobee, on Gunnersville, on St. John's, where the big ones just continuously get. So if you're fishing there in the pre spawn or around the spawn or even in the post spawn, where the post spawn a little bit less unless you're fishing more offshore, but in the pre-spawn where the fish are moving up shallow and they're coming to you. It is one of the worst things you can do to run around because a lot of times you have fish coming to you. So if you got a place on Gunnersville that there's like eight or ten places where it typically gets one and you decide to fish in one of those places. Well, if you can run around and run a bunch of good looking stuff, but those places don't have the potential to have 30 pounds swimming to it every day like a lot of those historic places do. So if you're going to fish somewhere like Gunnersville in March or anytime there's some type of a migration, you're going to want to stay put, find an area where it has the potential for the big fish to keep coming to you. And that's when you're going to want to kind of cycle through baits, cycle through areas, expand a little bit, go a little bit shallower, go a little bit deeper, go to a little bit different types of color, of cover or anything like that. That's whenever it's the most important to stay put. Now, a lot of times whenever you're fishing a lake that fishes a little bit smaller like this year we're going to, to uh, Pickwick June the 2nd Pickwick doesn't fish that big offshore it just doesn't there's not that much structure offshore now obviously there is a lot but when you've got 80 90 100 guys out there rotating on the same stuff all day long Sometimes the best thing you can do is stay put if you're on an area that has a school that the fish are firing or the fish are biting and you feel like you can catch enough to have a decent day or a good day. If you stay put, a lot of times it's better not to move around a lot because if you leave one of your spots and you run to another ledge 
and a boat just left you could get in a bad rotation and you could hit seven eight nine you could hit 20 or 25 places in a row that another boat has just hit them or already hit them today so you can get in a bad rotation so a lot of times on those lakes that fish a little bit smaller pickwick is not a small lake but it will fish a little bit smaller it did this time and the water was full for half the tournament it was super low for half of the tournament also but that lake is going to fish small it's going to be really important to stay put now when is it more important to fish fast if you go to a lake like well any lake whenever it is late summer post spawn even in the winter a lot of people don't think about fishing fast in the winter but anytime the fish are kind of where they're gonna be for a little bit of time like if they're up if they're all up spawning i feel like you're gonna do a little bit better unless you're in a super good area going a little bit faster and increasing your odds of coming past a bigger one that's a little bit more aggressive so whenever the fish are up there and they're kind of stationary you know like middle of summer the fish is, is two or three months until fall or it's you know a lot of, a long time until fall and we're a long time away from the from the spawn those fish are kind of going to be where they're going to be for a long time and a lot of times it's about pulling up and catching the couple that are active and then moving on to some other ones because it's not really advantageous to sit there and hope that one of them gets aggressive if there's not more fish coming to exactly what you're fishing now i can't help it I love to fish fast. That's what I want to do. I like throwing braided line. I like throwing a swim jig. Don't get too good to look at this one though because this is a prototype from Untamed. I like throwing braid, big rods. I like to move down the bank and go as fast as I possibly can go. So for me, I don't want to go slow. But people have been telling me for like ever, for as long as I've been fishing, everybody's been telling me I fish too fast and I go too fast and I run around too much. I like doing it. It's fun for me. I don't now, tell you that. Hunter does it. Hunter tells me to go I tell, faster. I tell you to leave places. Yeah, Hunter, Hunter, let's go. Hunter tells me to go faster. But anyways, that's kind of my breakdown on why I fish so fast, why I run and gun so much. And obviously, there's guys who have made an awesome living, won a ton of tournaments. Even this year, you know, where people have won tournaments, kind of milking one spot. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with either one. I'm just kind of breaking down what I think would be the optimized approach to bass fishing of going both ways so basically for me that's kind of my thoughts on it if y'all agree to that if y'all fish the way that i fish or y'all a little bit more slower and methodical and you like to really milk an area and go through it with a couple of baits leave me a comment down below let me know if you've got an application where you've been over a spot you know and you were throwing a crankbait or something like that and you turned around and picked up a shaky head and absolutely crushed them let me know because i want to know what exactly it takes to trigger the fish because i know i do fish over some sometimes there's just no way around it so if y'all enjoyed that i appreciate it we're gonna be making more of these videos in the fall we're really trying to ramp it up got a little bit burnt out on filming this year but we're back now fishing a lot filming a lot hope y'all enjoyed that video if you did hit the subscribe button and let me know y'all's thoughts on the topic down below and we'll see you on the next one appreciate it